This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma rabbana lak alhamd ala ma an'amta alayna min ni'man la tuhsa ya akram al-akramin. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta al-samiyu al-alim wa tub alayna inna kanta al-tawab al-rahim. Wallah, we ask you that you grant us the facilitated grace to continue to gather in your remembrance and in your praise and in gratitude and in celebrating your love and the love of your messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we ask you o allah that you grant us to meet the month of ramadan and to find the reality of that month and you facilitate for us to fast and to stand in prayer and to gather in breaking the fast together and to gather in having suhoor together and to gather in remembering you together, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you that you make this upcoming month a month of connecting with you and connecting with your book and connecting with your messenger and connecting with the realities of this great gift that is your religion, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you that you make this month for us a month of connecting with our parents, of connecting with our families, of connecting with our friends, of connecting with our neighbors, to connecting with our community, but in but connecting in ways that connect us with you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you that you make all the beautiful social dimensions of this month expressions of true gratitude and celebrating of your favors, but that we not Use your blessings to busy us away from you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you, O Allah, that you grant us the true realities of gratitude in this month, the true realities of love in this month, and to, to, to instir in our heart a sense of urgency to seek you, to seek your Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and to seek those means that make us of the people of your love, your closeness, your presence, and a sense of urgency to rid our lives, our hearts, our minds, our souls, our conduct, our character, and our actions of all those darknesses and all those veils that keep us from the realities of closeness to you. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you, O Allah, that you grant victory to those who are oppressed and assistance and facilitation to those in difficulty and distress that you open the floodgates of good for us and for the ummah of your beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu wa sallam mubarak ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa barakallahu ta'ala fikum a number of people have been asking that what is the plan here at um, Seekers Guidance Canada for the month of Ramadan and inshallah this will be up on our website very shortly um, but we are in this month of Ramadan bi'ithnillahi ta'ala we, we are holding uh, daily programming bi'ithnillahi ta'ala um, by having a pre-iftar class that takes place 45 minutes before Maghrib time it's 25 maximum 30 minutes to give people ample time to get back home for those who are able to, we are going to be holding um, potluck iftars here, um, uh, which is not, which, you know, come with whatever you would eat at home, come here. And as we know, the Prophet said, said, The best of food is what most hands partake of. And so we'll, we will be having potluck iftars. Um, and then, um, Immediately as Isha comes in, we'll be praying Isha. Uh, Sheikh Abdullah will be sharing a brief reminder and they'll be holding a brief 20 rakahs of taraweeh prayer. We are not doing a khatam, but we'll be holding 
brief taraweeh prayer, we have, alhamdulillah, a community in which there are many opportunities to attend a whole khatam of the Qur'an, but there are others also who, who wish to attend a briefer taraweeh. We will have the reminder with, uh, with Shaykh Abdullah some nights. I'll, I'll, I'll step in and you know, make the most of this beautiful month. Uh, ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate that for us and for you and for the whole ummah of his beloved messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And we are just ask you for your dua. Alhamdulillah, as you, many of you know, we have we, we had a major campaign to, to revamp the Seekers Guidance website. The first phase of that revamp and redesign will be uh, will be live in the upcoming week before Ramadan uh, comes. And alhamdulillah, um, you know, one of the main focal points of this month of Ramadan is for people to, you know, to, to encourage people to commit to, to, uh, to, to learning. So registration in the Islamic studies curriculum, the youth studies curriculum, the Arabic uh, langu- uh, language program, the Quran studies certificate, and all, you know, all these various, we have four major learning streams, um, registration for all of them, uh, for their level ones, Will be, will be open ta'ala. so that's an excellent opportunity both for yourself because one of the best things one can do in this month is to make an intention to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. but turning to Allah is r- related closely to seeking the knowledge that enables you to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and also to look at one of the other things to look at in this month that we're really focusing our call at seekers with is to make a commitment to serve. Right? And there are many ways of serving. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are wrapping up the third round of the Seekers Internship Program. And last, you know, this third round, we had over 400 uh, people who applied for the internship program. We took, in, took on about 45 people, most of whom have remained active throughout the internship. And there's a training component to it and a service component to it in which people have in the previous rounds and this round have benefited extensively. We are expanding the scope of the Seekers Internship Program to, to take on a larger number of interns right here at Seekers Canada as well. Um, and that's an, an important opportunity. And now, especially as things are open up, opening up, we're, we really do need people to also to, to step up to help us in our mandate uh, to spread beneficial knowledge and guidance in our community. And if you, you have thoughts about that, uh, you, you do, do reach out because alhamdulillah, the, the need is, is deep and wide. Um, Barakallahu ta'ala feekum. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Just before we start the recitation of Adiyah al this prayer for victory, the Dua al-Nasiri, is a, an extremely powerful supplication by one of the great saints of North Africa, one of the, a very noble scholar. And it's a Dua so powerful that the French had actually banned it. They're scared of it. Right? And, and mashallah, uh, the, the sunnah in difficulties right, is that you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The sunnah in everything is that you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it, it is the sunnah always that we, that we take the means. Right? Now, sometimes there are outward means to take. Sometimes there's inward means to take. The asl is that we take both. Outward means and inward means. But the believer, being a servant of Allah, always takes means. Right? But in some situations, there is no outward means. But the inward means remains, which is to, to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So even when there isn't an evident outward means, there, there is the inward means of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the answer to Allah's, 
to the servant's asking is ultimately by Allah giving the servant what is of their ultimate good. How that is, we do not know, right? And a lot of times we are pained by different things. It is important that we invest in taking the means. And we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing in our lives for the things that we are concerned about, right? If you're just talking about justice in Canada or justice here or justice there, what are you doing to make things better? Right? But you have to always remember that just as they are, outward means, they're also deep and profound inward means. One of which is dua. The other is certitude in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which dua is interrelated with. Third is to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those inward means are always possible even if there's no apparent outward means because they may manifest at some other time. And it took over 190 years for the, for the Muslims to reconquer Jerusalem. Okay. But, the, but when there is no good outward means doesn't mean that we are passive. We continue. Right? And similarly... Um, I was just gifted by a dear friend of mine through, 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 through someone who, who just came. A wonderful work by an example of someone who stood against oppression in very difficult circumstances. A, a person of great principle and great service and beautiful character, Sheikh Siraj Hendricks. And there's a beautiful you know, brief biography of his by a dear friend. Uh, Dr. Hisham Hellier It's called A Luminous Lamp In the Shade of the Table Mountain of, And about Sheikh Siraj Hendricks Who's from a notable family of scholars Who've been serving the C Cape Town South Africa community And the South African community more broadly And a global community um, Really uh, Sheikh Siraj was su such a person who served the Muslim community uh, in South Africa at a time uh, when not just the Muslims, but others were oppressed under apartheid. Things were so serious that, they, you know, they, that each ethnic group, according to a very strange definition of ethnicity, was not allowed in the evening times to be in other areas. So night prayers, if you were brown, you couldn't be in a colored mosque. And if you were black, you couldn't be in, a, in an Indian or colored, there's all these classifications. You, know, you could be jailed on a technicality if you're born from an Indian and, you know, and black background, for example. And Sheikh Siraj, given his background, was in a very complex area. And however, they continued their teaching of the religion and their standing up with principle but with patience, with dignity against the oppression right? while providing amazing guidance and teaching and, um, and incredible sacrifices to ensure that the community was served. And he was someone who in his last years, Sheikh Siraj, I used to go annually, sometimes more than once a year, to... Uh, to Cape Town, compromised his own health to be serving the community. That literally, uh, people used to make fun of him. Sheikh Siraj, when do you rest? Right? When do you rest? Because his house, and I, I used to go, you know, he lived as part of the Zawiya complex. His front door routinely wasn't locked. Sometimes we'd ring the doorbell and nobody's answering. So we, didn't, we wouldn't go inside, just open the door and say, Assalamu alaikum, because the front door is not locked, right? Because, and literally his house would be open for whoever would come. And, and sometimes we'd go in and he'd host us, etc. He'd walk away because in one of the other living rooms, there'd be someone else who's there for a fiqh problem. Someone else is there for a marital dispute. Someone else is there for this and that, right? And, and he had so much humility that often people would say, look, you have so many students. Why don't you let some of them deal with these questions? I said, yes. 
said, but we are here to serve. So someone comes asking you for service, you know, asking you to serve them, it is not appropriate to hand them over to somebody else. Right? And even his phone, right? Like I asked permission, you can I have your phone number? He said, let me see which one I should give you because he had a bunch of phone numbers. Right? And subhanAllah, a very, very special person. It's, you know, we should know about the luminaries of our times and of recent times because it is, it is truly, uh, it is truly uh, in, in, inspiring. And with so much you know, humility and so much straightforwardness, um, it, it's incredible. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on, on, on Sheikh Siraj, um, whose name was, you know, Siraj is a light-giving lamp. Which is why it's a very or you know a luminous lamp, um, and it's a, a very appropriate title. And um, if you get a chance to get a any copy of this book, public, it's by Sheikh, by Doctor Hisham Hellier, um, a luminous lamp um, by Doctor Hisham Hellier. It's published by Dar Turath Al Islami, founded and, and run by a dear friend and, and brother. Um, the Mufti of the Muslim Judicial Council of South Africa, Sheikh Abdurrahman Khan, may Allah preserve him, who uh, is also from this beautiful tradition of uh, Cape Townian scholarship. And it's also it's important to know, sometimes we feel that we're alone in so many challenges, that there's all these challenges facing the community, etc. And we've done some sessions before, because if you recall, at Seekers 3.0, we had a, you know, we had a number of programs where we talked about the, the Cape Townian uh, Muslim tradition. And they have preserved Islam there for nearly four centuries. And they went there. And we, you know, we think we deal with a little bit of Islamophobia and so on. The kind of oppression they dealt with. The first Muslims that, that went there went as slaves and as political prisoners. They were not allowed to even have a copy of the Quran. They were not allowed to have any religious books they're not allowed to gather they're not even allowed to pray and Cape Town is surrounded by nearly 30 maqams of the great scholars who uh, served that community those maqams are known as karamat places of miracles even the Dutch call them karamat right? because it is known they're amazing there's a problem, of course, all these karamat are on the tops of the mountains. And as being someone who deeply believes in the principle of conservation of energy, as a very good principle in life, it was annoying. If you want to go visit these scholars, and it's sunnah to visit graves, you have to go up the hill. And then what's the point of climbing a hill when you have to climb back down? So I asked one of my hosts, Dr. Yusuf Patel, that... Dr. Yusuf, why are they buried on top of the hill? Because even if they died, he said because they died there. So well, if they died there, just bury them in the bottom of the hill. But the reason was that these scholars, what they would do in those early centuries, because they weren't allowed to gather, they would flee to the mountains. Right? They would tell the slaves, the, the, the others who were there in difficult condition, on such and such day, the sheikh is conducting his classes, his retreats. So they would they would flee. And some of them knew. Once they would come back to their masters, to their work, because they're indentured labor as well, they would be punished. They may be tortured. But they would go and learn. And they would go and learn. They would go and gather and worship together and come back. And there's amazing ways that the, that the deen uh, was preserved, but they held fast to it. The first masjid in Cape Town, which very, uh, you know, they chose a very simple name for it. They called it Masjid Awal, right? The first mosque. The founder there, called Tuan Guru, um, was a was a noble, very noble scholar. He he ha he got married and had children, and they weren't allowed to have a copy of the Quran. He wrote out two copies of the Quran, one for each son, from memory. And there's only two errors just in the tashkil in them, and they're still on display. But now they, because of theft, they just keep the a copy of it, and but you know it's in still in safekeeping. And there's amazing ways. One of the other scholars, 60 years later, 
I said, okay, we need to have a book to teach. And decades had passed and nobody was allowed to own copies of books. So he wrote from memory six books. And it's called Al Khulasa or something. Six books that he wrote out from memory that were transmitted to him by memory. And later, when things opened up a little bit and books came, their khulasa was essentially identical to the texts that it transmitted. So that's how knowledge is transmitted. Right? And there's amazing, amazing uh, tales of how, um, real stories documented of how they, they preserved the deen. And, it, and, and you know, it's one of the most vibrant uh, Muslim communities in a minority setting. Inshallah, Sheikh... Sheikh Abdullah will, will go there sometimes, sometime soon, bi'nilai ta'ala. And we, we are honored, of course, at Seekers to have several teachers from the Cape Town community. Uh, Sheikh Abdurrahman Khan, Sheikh Irshad uh, Siddiq, uh, also uh, Sheikh Muhammad Kar, and a number of our, of, of our team is also based out of South Africa, like Sid Jamaluddin Khan and others. And it's important to, you know, Sometimes if you want, want to relax, don't just w watch the news, but see what, you know, learn about the Muslim communities, right? And there's so many places that there's amazing. And it's also very important when we follow news, the basis of mainstream news is bad news, right? Even a lot of times, all people want to talk about, even our community, is all the problems, right? And beware, all these people talking about negative things about our community, we failed in this, we failed... If you sit back and look at the GTA Muslim community, there are so many amazing things. You look, step back and look, what is our community doing this Ramadan? There are amazing things that our community is doing and has done right, through the pandemic. Right? It's incredible. The number of places that, that are feeding the poor. We prayed at Yemen Masjid, just down the road, you know, the Cooper's Mosque. And they raised funds through the pandemic in the recent months you know, to, to feed, I don't know, how many thousand um, uh, people iftars in Somalia, right? To build wells in you know there because they they work with a, a, a Somali sheikh for that. So many good things, right? And that's one of the traps of the shaitan that he all only wants you to see the negative. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he wants you to lose hope, right? Right. Whereas yes, there are challenges, but there's so much khair in our community. That's the promise of the Prophet Ummati kal matar. My community is like rain. It's not evident whether the first of it is better or the last of it. No doubt the first rain has the greatest benefit. But rain is rain. Right? All of it has goodness. Right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to have right concern, but also to, to align our priorities aright. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate, and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.